Welcome back. Um, today we're going to talk about curve fitting or regression, whichever you prefer to call it, using the polyfit command in MATLAB. Um, you know, MATLAB has a lot of toolboxes for curve fitting and mapping and regression, uh, but we're, I want to stick to the basic things. Uh, here's our scenario. Um, you work for a railroad. Your rail, the railroad had a uh, train um, that runs from Detroit to Chicago. You know, they started out back in the steam era here, and trains were slow. They got on faster trains, faster trains, faster trains. And your current train goes 50 miles an hour top speed. Um, they want to buy a train that will go 70 miles an hour or 75. I forget we'll get, <laughs> when we get to the data. And we want to uh, guesstimate how long is it going to take for the faster train to get from Detroit to Chicago. Now, you can't just take the top speed of the train and, and divide it out because you know, the train has to slow down for switching yards and this and that. So you get the idea that, well, we can grab some old data from all these different trains. It ran at different speeds, and we'll fit a curve to it. And let me go one more slide. So so we went back into the archives. We grabbed a set of, of data for the train that ran 50, and we grabbed a set of data from the old train, which ran 45 one that ran 40, one that ran 35, and a really old train that only ran 30 miles an hour. And we're going to try and, and fit a curve to this, and then somewhere out here at 70, we'll come up with our prediction of what the speed of the train or the time to get to Chicago is for the faster train. Okay? Seems straightforward, right? Let's leap into MATLAB. That's the the nice thing here. We're not going to spend much time in PowerPoint. Okay, so I've set up this script file uh, in a I loaded it up on my GitHub account. So if you want it, it's available as an example. This file just creates the data uh, real quickly. I'm using setting the random number generator to a specific seed so I get the same data every time and I'm just essentially using the random number generator to to give me values you know for all this data and then plot it but so I'm going to use the command polyfit and the inputs to the command are the independent variable or x variable which would be speed our dependent variable the time and the order of the fit, which in this case I've set to two. So it's a second order polynomial, and it will return the coefficients of that polynomial. So, uh, for example, you know, the, this may be the values that it returns, minus 0.044 or 0.0044 minus 0 0.60 something and 25. And those coefficients would be essentially the coefficients of an equation that looks like this, okay? So my, I get the equation time is equal to that first coefficient times the speed squared, second coefficient times speed, my independent variable, plus an offset here, okay? So that's the form of the equation. So let's just do evaluate selection, and I can go to my MATLAB. And so here's the coefficients I have right now, okay? So it's 0 0.0111 times the speed squared and minus 1.17 times the speed plus 37 gives me my best estimate for the time, okay? Um, I can, now that I have these values, I can evaluate it. Say if I had a train that went 48 miles an hour, you know, it says it's going to take 6.8 hours. And if we look at our original graph here, um, you know, 50 miles an hour, we took about six and a half. Uh, our 45 mile an hour train on average took about seven and a half. So we're looking at a point, some miles an hour, 6.8, somewhere around there. That's, that's not, doesn't seem unreasonable to me. But it's nice to know how the whole thing fits. So I'm going to create some data. I'm going to create this variable xx. 
and it's going to range from 30 to 50 in increments of 0.5. So basically, I'm just creating a whole bunch of values over the range from, from 30 to 50 that we did on this for our data collection. Um, and then I'm going to evaluate my polynomial. I have these coefficients for my polynomial. So I'll use polyval, and I'll give it the coefficients that we created up, up on this line. And I'm going to give it as my independent variable, the xx values that I created here that cover the range of interest. And I'm going to calculate the expected values, expected times. OK, so let's just do that. Evaluate selection, and it's just going to be a huge matrix, so I won't show you that. But then what I'll do is I'll plot this, open a new finger. I'm going to plot my original data, speed and time. I'm going to plot my line that I just created, xx and yy. Um, and I'm going to plot the average values that I calculated just, just to have those on the, on the graph so we can kind of compare, OK? So evaluate selection. And there's my fit. It doesn't look too bad, I don't think. You know, so it's a little below, my curve is a little below the average here, a little above the average there, below, below, above. It's not awful, you know. Um, I could potentially go to a third order fit if I wanted to get fancier things, but that's not looking too bad, OK? So now I've got a nice smooth curve. And I'm going to do something risky. Okay, this whole idea is risky, extrapolating, uh, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. But, so if, if I evaluate this polynomial at 50, and where's my MATLAB command window? Oops, too far. There it is. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So my expected time at 50 miles an hour, or for 50 mile an hour train, I should say, because it's going slower than that on average, is 6.6354 hours. Okay, and then I can say, well, I'm gonna my 75 mile an hour train should be a lot shorter, right? Uh, my 75 mile an hour train is now going to take almost 12 hours. Does that make sense? Faster train is going to take longer using this curve that I fit. What's up with that? OK, we fit a second order polynomial to this data, right? Essentially a parabolic-ish curve. Let's, let's, let's see what happens here. When I draw my curve, create it using values instead of 30 to 50 where I had my data, I'm going to look at create a line that runs from 30 to 80, find the expected values, OK? And I'm going to plot that. And yeah, OK. So it, it fits. Let's make this bigger. It fits reasonably well through here, but as soon as we get outside of the range where we have actual data, it gets stupid real fast, right? And if I'd done a third order curve, well, let's do that. Let's do a third order curve. Fit order equals 3. It'll just take a second. OK, now, you know, my 75 mile an hour train gets to Chicago in minus 30 hours. Uh, it's, it's just stupid. It really is, you know. The, it, it may look good in this region here where we have our actual data, but once we step outside that and try to extrapolate, it, it's, it's garbage. It's just garbage, OK? Extrapolation is always risky when you're doing curve fitting, regression, things like that. There's, the risk is, is huge. Let's, let's go back here for just a second and let me explain why it's such a disaster in this particular case. So our first principles, we have the speed is distance over time by definition. So the time to get from Detroit to Chicago is the distance divided by the speed, or at least proportional to that, right? Because we don't know the actual speed. 
I'm trying to fit an equation time equals that coefficient times speed squared plus another coefficient times speed plus this offset coefficient. Um, this is never going to be equal to that, right? It's just not the same equation. It doesn't have the same behavior. When you, you know we can get a decent fit in the limited range across the limited range of data, but when we step out of there, it's it's just worthless. Okay? Can we fix it? Any of you guys have any ideas? Stop and think about it for a minute. Pause the video. Did you come up with this solution? If we fit an equation like this, where we have the coefficient times 1 over the speed, right? Now this, and then there's this offset that comes along for the ride. But now time equals something times 1 over speed. Time equals distance over speed. I have the same form of the equation, OK? So I can equate this inverse polynomial to my actual physical behavior and maybe get something that makes a little more sense. OK? Let's see how that looks. So here's my inverse fit. I'm going to create a variable i speed equals 1 over speed. And I'm going to make my, oops, my fit order 1, because that's all I really need. I don't need this second or third order polynomial, because I'm trying to match the actual physics here, which is just a single parameter. So my fit order is 1. And I'm going to find the coefficients, evaluate selection, and let's see what the coefficients are for the fun of it. Uh, 439 is the main coefficient, and then I got this little offset. It's pretty small, and it's not going to have, you know, especially when we, in, in the greater order of things, I guess it's not that small. It's, there's an offset, and ideally this, this would be zero, but the best fit for our polynomial is has that. And depending upon your data set, this may be smaller or larger. Um, you know, I created really noisy, lousy data for this example. And that's fine. So, so now we've got the coefficients. Uh, well, it's 439 in this case, divided by the speed plus that offset. Uh, again, I'll create my set of data to draw a line with across the range of interest, calculate the expected values. We can create a graph, evaluate selection. That's that graph. And if I come back to this graph, you know, that was our second order polynomial. And this is our inverse. Uh, I couldn't tell you just eyeballing it which one is a better fit. You know, we could run some statistical tests on it and, uh, you know, play games. And we may find that one or the other is a better fit. And it may depend on the actual data set. But they both look decent just, just from the eyeball. So what happens when I uh, compare my Expected time at 50. Evaluate selection. Now it's 6.38. Uh, it was 6.63 with the second order. No, that was third order. Um, let's go back here. 6.635 was our second order, I think. 6.38. So it's not changing much in terms of our expected value at 50. And that's probably a good thing. Now when we say, well, what happens at 70? Now I'm extrapolating. Now I'm taking a chance here. But let's see what it says. Well, and now we went from 6.38 to 3.87. At least we went the right direction, right? So let's go a little bit further and Evaluate that to make our new graph. So here's my data running out to 80 miles an hour. And if I pop up figure, which one makes more sense? OK. The one on the right, where we use the inverse, 
um, is significantly less stupid, okay, because we have the right physics. If I throw a zero into my equation, uh, do I, where's my numbers? Okay, so if I throw, you know, a zero into the equation, so I have 439 divided by zero, um, that's infinite, right? So if the train isn't moving, it's going to take an infinite amount of time. Uh, makes sense. If I put an infinite speed in here, uh, this first term divided by infinity comes out to zero, and I'm saying it's going to take a negative 2.4 hours to get to Chicago. Eh, not quite right, you know. But um, you know, it's not it's not some completely bizarre thing, you know. Uh, if we with our polynomial, you know, second order, we say it's going to basically be an inf infinite amount of time to get to Chicago. Uh, if we did the third order, it's probably a negative infinite amount, infinite amount of time, and those are just total nonsense, you know. But with our inverse fit, at least at least we're in the ballpark, right? We got the right form of the equation, you know, and when you, it almost makes sense, right? I mean, I have a, I'm a lot more comfortable doing an extrapolation when my form of the equation here, form of the equation matches the physics, the first order principles, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm just a thousand percent more comfortable, okay? It's still a little risky extrapolating, um, you know, in an ideal world, we would get rid of that coefficient, you know, and we can, but, you know, not using polyfit. So, and I, I, I did it this way because I've seen this just hundreds of times. Well, maybe not hundreds, but many, many times. Um, people will just take data and they throw polyfit at it or a polynomial, how you do it in, in Excel, you do it in MATLAB, you do it in whatever. You throw the data at a polynomial, polynomial, you look at your statistics, yeah, it fits pretty good, my coefficients are all significant, and you think you got something, okay? And I've seen cases where people have uh, tried to fit data, and, you know, they're to get a really good fit, they're up to a fifth or sixth or seventh order polynomial, and I, this, this is not just students either, it's, you know, I've, I've seen this with professors, I've seen it with uh, engineers in industry, um, one case in particular we were looking at was a, a professor and a PhD student, and he was fitting of some engine airflow data to engine speed, and you know he's using a fifth or sixth order polynomial, and I'm I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, well, it's not a function of speed; it's a function of the time it takes to, that you have available to fill the cylinder. And I said, well, have you tried inverse speed? What happens? You know, and he sat down and a second or third order polynomial fit just as good, if not better, than the fifth or sixth order polynomial. And all of a sudden I look like this genius, you know, how'd I come up? But I'm not, you know. <laughs> it's it's just, and excuse me for getting on my soapbox, but stop and think. Don't just automatically throw polynomials at data. Try to stop and think. Is this a function of those parameters? Is it a function of the inverse of those parameters? Is it a function of those parameters to an exponent or the logarithmic, you know? Get your equation, create variables um, that have approximately the right shape. Your curves will fit better. It won't be a guaranteed utter disaster if you extrapolate a little bit. Still, be careful about extrapolation. It's always risky. Um, you know, use, use your head, okay? So, excuse me for, for wandering off and soapboxing on you, but it really does make a difference, and it's just something I've seen so many times. I, I wanted to make that point, okay? Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful, and I'll catch you on the flip side.